June 22, 1944. It's been raining for days now, and the air smells of wet earth and rot. The humidity is unbearable, and the mosquitoes never leave us alone. We've been stationed in Belarus for weeks, holding a defensive line near a small village. Command says the Soviets are planning something big, but no one knows when or where they'll strike. We hear rumors of a massive Russian offensive, but it's hard to separate fact from fear in this place. The men are on edge, tired of waiting for the inevitable. Every day, we dig deeper into our trenches, reinforcing our positions. The ground is soft and muddy, but we have no choice. We know the Soviets are out there, gathering their strength. We can feel their presence in the silence, in the way the birds don't sing anymore. It's like the land itself knows what's coming. June 24th, 1944. The attack came at dawn. It felt like the sky exploded above us. The artillery fire was relentless, shaking the earth beneath our feet. For hours, we were pinned down in the trenches, unable to move, barely able to breathe. The shells kept falling, each one closer than the last. Men screamed for help but there was nothing anyone could do. The sound of it, it's something you never forget. When the shelling finally stopped, the Russians came. I've never seen anything like it. They moved like a wave, endless rows of soldiers advancing through the smoke and debris. We fired everything we had, but it wasn't enough. They just kept coming. Our machine guns overheated, and our rifles felt useless against their sheer numbers. I saw men I've known for years fall beside me, cut down by Soviet bullets. We fought as hard as we could, but we were overwhelmed. We had no choice but to retreat. June 26, 1944 We've fallen back to a new position, but things are worse than ever. The Soviets are pressing us hard, and we're running out of supplies. The roads are clogged with refugee civilians fleeing the fighting, desperate to escape the advancing Red Army. They tell stories of villages burned, of people executed. I've seen the fear in their eyes, and it chills me to the bone. Our unit is a shadow of what it once was. So many of the men are gone now, either dead or missing. We don't talk about them much anymore, it's too painful. Instead, we focus on surviving the next battle, the next barrage. That's all we can do. Survive. July 1st, 1944. It's a miracle we're still alive. The Soviets are relentless, attacking us day and night. The forest is thick here, and it's become a graveyard for tanks and men alike. The air smells of burning fuel and blood. We've been forced to fight in the woods, using whatever cover we can find. The trees provide some shelter, but the enemy is everywhere. We've been cut off from the main force for days now. Supplies are low, and the wounded are piling up. We try to move them when we can, but there's nowhere safe. I can hear the men whispering about surrender, about finding a way out of this nightmare. But we know what happens to prisoners of the Soviets. No one wants to end up in one of their camps. July 10th, 1944. This might be my last entry. We've been surrounded, and the Soviets are closing in. There's no escape, no reinforcements coming to save us. The fighting has been brutal. Hand-to-hand -hand combat in the trenches and forests. The Soviets fight like animals, ruthless and unyielding. We've done terrible things too, but it feels like none of it matters anymore. I don't know how much longer we can hold out. Some of the men have started burning their papers, destroying anything that could identify them as soldiers. I don't know what's worse dying here or being captured by the Russians. Either way, this war feels like it's already over.